Hi folks, in this video I'll summarize an experiment conducted during the summer monsoon of 2024 designed to understand the impact of mulch on a modest water harvesting basin here in Tucson, Arizona. Part 2 is in development and we'll cover how respective data was sonified for the purpose of using sound versus visual or graphical cues for communicating results. For those of you who just want to hear the first draft of the sonified data without further explanation, you're most welcome to advance to the end of this video for the work in progress. For others who may just want a copy of the data for your own review and experimentation, I've included a link in the description of this video, which includes all the graphs that will be presented here. So if you're a subscriber to my channel, you know I live in a community in Tucson that takes advantage of mulch as a climate change resiliency strategy as it relates to diminishing our reliance on imported sources of water for irrigation. You've probably also seen details of this setup, which consists of various sensors for logging environmental conditions within and above a modest water harvesting basin. Most recently, I've been interested in understanding the impact of mulch on improving the potential for soil moisture retention. In prior videos, I've played with these inexpensive capacitive soil moisture sensors with mixed results. Subscribers have been helpful in suggesting remedies for some of the challenges I've shared, but even if I can get a good signal over time, using these for reliable irrigation management is rather complicated. As such, I've put these on hold for now. A simpler approach may be one of just looking at soil temperature as an indicator of moisture, but how would this work? Well, from prior experiments, I know that moisture in the soil column acts as a buffer in high temperatures, since heat is consumed through evaporation, similar to how sweat can cool you on a hot day. As moisture is lost to evaporation, soil loses its capacity to cool itself and starts to cook, resulting in higher temperatures. Since water is a great way to cool surfaces, measuring temperature over time may be an effective way of measuring its presence or absence. In this regard, how might that dynamic be impacted by adding a layer of mulch to a water harvesting basin? Well, the literature is clear on the benefits of mulch for improving infiltration and helping with water conservation, but I decided to measure this on my own out of general curiosity on what the actual numbers look like within my own backyard and also to explore data sonification. And that's where this instrument comes in, which I've summarized in prior videos. For the purposes of the experiment that I'll describe today, it's made up of a suite of temperature sensors mounted on a mahogany staff. These sensors are coupled with a data logger and a real-time clock for recording soil and air temperature data over time. The instrument was installed in my yard over a year ago and has been collecting data ever since. Here's a conceptual model of the setup showing the location of various sensors above and below ground. Since the initial installation, I've added a BMP280 temperature sensor, which is housed in an appropriate radiation shield for measuring air temperature, and I've also added a precision rain gauge. In prior videos, I shared details of data collected during the first seven months of 2024, showing how the instrument is capturing a daily diurnal signature in soil temperature over time, and also how it can be used to derive an average daily increase in soil temperature at different elevations within the basin. It was interesting to see how these diurnal swings decrease as I go deeper into the soil profile, while also buffering the overall increase in temperature as the summer approached. The diurnal swings just about disappear at 12 inches below ground, whereas the overall rate of increase in temperature is maintained relative to the sensor at 6 inches in depth. That brings us up to date through July 24th of 2024. For the purposes of my next experiment, I'll start by clearing the site of any debris in order to understand how the temperature of bare soil in a water harvesting basin responds to any rainfall that might impact it during the summer monsoon. All right, folks, so here you can see how the setup is doing a year after the fact. So I've got this little basin with some rocks uh, to keep the soil from caving in. Um, you can see that as I trim my bushes, my landscape, I go ahead and I just throw whatever uh, trimmings I have in there just for grins, just to see if I can build up a soil layer. So all the mulch that I've been accumulating uh, in this little basin over the past year has been removed. This kind of shows you what it looks like. 
has created a nice little environment for bugs to help aerate the soil. I can see there's all kinds of activity here from just leaving this alone. And the other thing I notice is this is wet from rainfall events that we've had over the last week. I bet if I come back uh, later this afternoon, now that I've removed all this mulch, all these little bugs will be gone and this will be bone dry. So, um, you know, chalk one up for mulch. I think it really helps in situations like this. I almost feel uh, a little guilty um, destroying the habitat, the nice habitat that's been created for all these little bugs in here, but uh, I am interested in uh, collecting some data, so. Alrighty, so the system's been reset, and in addition, I have this really nice rain gauge now that's going to give me some uh, precise measurements on rainfall impacting this little basin, so I can compare one rainfall event to another. This first phase of my experiment will run between July 25th and August 16th. To keep things simple for this first run, I'm only going to present temperature data collected at ground and then compare it to air temperature. Data will be logged once every 15 minutes. I'll record rainfall data as well to understand how rain might impact soil temperature relative to air temperature. As a side note, the sensors I've installed are also collecting humidity and air pressure data, but I want to keep things simple for this first take, so I won't be summarizing those data sets. And here's the respective data. Notice how ground temperature typically exceeds air temperature as demonstrated by the respective brown series peaking above the blue series. Also notice that rainfall events plotted with yellow triangles relative to the second axes do have an impact on that dynamic, resulting in air temperature exceeding soil temperature, although it can be difficult to see that impact in the raw data at this scale. In response, I prepared this graph, which plots the difference between air temperature and soil temperature. This helps magnify the difference while taking into account daily air temperature variations. When air temperature is warmer than soil temperature, the resulting delta will be a positive number captured graphically by the area highlighted in blue. In reviewing a close-up of that data, you can see that dynamic peaking in the morning hours. This makes sense since air is likely heating up more quickly than the soil when the sun is lower on the horizon in the morning. It might also be a function of the latency of soil moisture helping to keep temperatures cooler from overnight lows. Overall, it's generally better when soil temperatures are cooler than air temperature during a hot summer day, so we'll consider this blue zone a good place to be. When air temperature is cooler than soil temperature, the resulting delta will be a negative number, or the area of the graph highlighted in red. From the same close-up, you can see that this typically happens in the afternoon when soil has been baking from overhead exposure to the sun for some time. This is where I would hope that any moisture in the soil might be buffering the heating effect from overhead solar radiation and higher afternoon ambient air temperatures. In the absence of mulch, you can see here that rainfall above 4 tenths of an inch does have a positive impact on the index within the red zone. However, note that that impact is relatively short-lived, lasting only a couple days. This suggests a minimum threshold for rainfall of 4 tenths of an inch to realize a significant positive effect on this index before things start to cook again. For irrigation management, that might be considered a conservative threshold as it relates to shutting things down after a summer monsoon storm. All right, Thursday, August 15th, 10 a.m., and things are looking pretty hard pan in there. Things are pretty much dried out, I'd say. Let's see if I'm right or if there's something going on at depth. Yeah, it's pretty dry. A little bit of discoloration, but really not much. If I go a little deeper. Yeah, well, still a little bit of moisture. So in support of this experiment, this is the mulch that I've been collecting during the course of the year uh, from landscape operations at my home. The mulch is mostly made up of Palo Verde clippings that have been ground down to no more than four inches in length with most of the material measuring two inches or less. All right, let's see if I can capture the moment when this gets dumped in. me 
gonna need another wheelbarrow full. All right, folks, the basin is backfilled. I'll just give you a close up over here. You can see the original sensor that was at ground level is now gonna be buried. And the one that was at 3.3 inches, so I guess that means that I've got about three inches of mulch installed on this site is now at ground level. So there you go. So I'm looking at the horizon. We might get some rain tonight. I don't know if we'll get any big storms, but we're prepared if we do. And the last thing I did was I went ahead and I replaced this little cap just to create some shade for that sensor with the goal of not having that sensor being baked by the sun. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get some sun on it regardless. Not trying to publish any papers here i'm just trying to get a general idea so this is going to help a little bit and i can already see bugs i already saw a couple bugs there's one right there right on look at that here's a little guy hopefully they'll come back so i'm excited about that for the record the time is now about 5:35. Returning to our conceptual model, here's the basin before I added the mulch, and here's the basin after about three inches of mulch has been added to the same. As a result, the sensor I've been using to monitor soil surface temperature is now three inches beneath the surface. With this modification, we'll continue to take measurements over the next two weeks between August 16th and August 31st. So the following clips are of me visiting the basin before and after selected rainfall events, which I kept careful track of in a spreadsheet. I'm sharing these clips just so viewers have a feel for what the monsoons are like here in Tucson. Please advance if you'd just like to see the results. Let's see what we got. It uh, looks like 46 hundredths of an inch, which is awesome. And, uh, this little basin definitely got saturated, which is wonderful. Let's make sure everything's still working in the box. Looks good. Got for water. Nice. I filled up quite a bit. This was almost empty this morning. All right, Monday, August fourth, about nine thirty. So let's try a different part of the basin. See what it um, what it looks like. The ground does look like it's a little harder, but still might have some moisture at depth. Oh yeah. A little, a little humidity at depth. I can see it. It's still a little moist, so that's good. And I also realized that this basin isn't ideally situated. There are all kinds of influences associated with this wall, these plants, but uh, I'm not trying to write a scientific paper here. I'm just trying to kind of understand what conditions are like in this particular basin for this particular setting. And I have to head out, so unfortunately I won't be here for this storm. Let's see what it does. see what we got that was an intense storm I was in the gym so I wasn't here but it looks like we got 81 hundredths and uh, uh, one of my neighbors tells me that that fell in about 20 minutes so that was pretty intense ground in the basin is thoroughly wet 
See the lid off my water harvesting scene got blown off. But the uh, yard held up pretty good regardless. Oh, wow. <laughs> Welcome to Tucson. Oh, that makes me happy. Yeah, bobcats in the spring and frogs in the summer. Is that a toad? I'm not sure. Well, he sure is cute though. Or she. Maybe in the video. This is coming this way, folks. We might get a nice rainfall. That's crazy. Is this really? It's like it's, it does look like it's really cool. And here's that delta index showing conditions before the mulch was added. And this is what things look like after the addition of mulch at the same location. Notice we've improved the temperature dynamics relative to our unmulched basin by both diminishing the diurnal swings into the red zone and by also improving the magnitude of those swings into the blue zone. Effectively, a double whammy that's sustained in the absence of rainfall. Having said that, I realize I'm comparing apples to oranges since the sensor at soil surface is now three inches under an insulating layer of mulch. So for the comparison to be complete, let's compare pre-mulch soil surface dynamics to post-mulch mulch surface dynamics. In fact, this is the reason I included this T-knot sensor in the setup so that the analysis could be addressed accordingly. Again, here are the soil conditions at the surface before mulch was added. And here again, we see the impact after the mulch was added. In this case, the impact is greatest in the red zone of the graph, suggesting mulch does a better job of dissipating incident radiation in the afternoon, even in the absence of rain. Needless to say, this is a common sense conclusion, but still interesting to see in the data. First, let's focus on conditions when soil temperature is greater than air temperature in a basin without any mulch specifically the region of the graph shown in red. In a bare basin, rainfall greater than four tenths of an inch realizes about a 48 hour cooling effect on soil in the afternoon, as demonstrated by a positive influence on the red zone of this graph. The impact is less noticeable on the blue portion of the graph, but present nonetheless, suggesting that moisture from those relatively large storms may be capturing overnight low temperatures in the soil profile. If we pivot to the impact of mulch on improving the blue area of that graph, specifically on the magnitude of air temperature being greater than ground temperature in the mornings, you can see how adding mulch to the basin creates a sustained effect where the average max daily difference increases from 5.8 degrees to 13.8 degrees, an average improvement of 8 degrees Fahrenheit. In essence, we create conditions that realize the same impact of significant rainfall, but which are sustained in the absence of rain, as demonstrated by the last week of data. In looking at the red area, which highlights soil temperatures being much greater than air temperature in the afternoon, you can see how adding mulch to the basin creates a sustained positive effect, where the average max daily difference decreases from negative 17.8 to negative 11.4 degrees Fahrenheit, an improvement of over six degrees Fahrenheit. Similarly, the effect is sustained in the absence of rain as demonstrated by the last week of data. This was a fascinating project to share, and I know there are a lot of assumptions that are factored into my statements. For example, I'm not taking into account the impact of cloud cover, which was not measured. In addition, I understand some may have difficulty following the volume of graphs and data that I presented here, perhaps preferring to experience the results in a different way. In this regard, I've been exploring data sonification since it may provide a more visceral understanding not available through visual cues alone. 
In addition, I think it's kind of neat to be able to give a water harvesting basin an audible voice that's tied directly to soil temperature and rainfall. It's almost like having a one-on-one -on -one conversation here where you speak to the basin by applying mulch, and then the basin responds through changes in melody correlated to temperature. I will save that deep dive for part two, but I do want to acknowledge Matt Russo's videos on YouTube, which cover sonification with Python. He does a great job of clearly explaining how to turn your data into music, and I'll include a link in the description of this video. For those of you who just want to hear what I have thus far, here's a first draft of me exploring how to sonify the mean hourly delta between air and soil temperature where values are positive. For a musical context, the temperature data is mapped to C2 over three octaves using the Dorian mode with a magnitude of delta contributing linearly to pitch and velocity. In addition, rainfall is mapped to thunder, and I've included an organ flute to cue when mulch has been applied to the basin. You can either follow the sound by tracking the data on this graph, or close your eyes and see if you can hear what's going on without any visual cues. Here goes. And here's one more, this time looking at the negative region of the delta graph. In this case, the data is mapped to A over three octaves in aeolian mode. Pitch decreases in proportion to the absolute magnitude of the delta, whereas velocity is proportional to that delta. Here goes. On that note, it's been fun sharing this exploration with you. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for updates, including more data collection and sonification. Thanks and see you soon.